welcome to tutorial 14 on roof styles. Here is a roof. The default class is roof main. This is the simplest roof and we'll show you how we made it. It's not styled. We drew a rectangle here. We duplicated it. We rotated it. Add surface. We right click and we went to create roof. The dialog box opens and shows you a range of parameters. The vertical fascia, okay, it's 215, 3, the roof thickness, nominally 300. The bearing inset, number 4, I'm going to assume that the, that the wall below is also 300. The roof pitch is 40. Uh, six is the bearing height. Um, in this case, there isn't a wall there, but let's notionally put in 2.4. Uh, the eight is the eave overhang, 450. If you make a hole in it, it'll be splayed. And there we have it. A roof. The roof has control points. You'll see these are all hipped. If you click on one of these, you can change it to a gable or a Dutch gable. The gable inset, what about two, four hundred? There we are. How nice is that? You might have noticed you can show the walls there and then you get the wall in the gable end. So this is your basic schematic roof. We can insert a fascia, fascia settings, an inch thick, and the fascia height should match the what we had for the roof. There it is. There are other settings. If you want to put a soffit in, an attic, it kind of gives us a ceiling. Perfectly simple. We may well, of course, want to put in windows or dormers. Here we have roof windows and here we have a dormer. Just to note that when you put in that fascia, it doesn't give a fascia to the gable i.e. a barge board. We need to add that. I made it a framing number and it's in class roof fascia. So if I turn roof fascia off you'll see that the gable fascia will disappear but the one for the, the, the eaves won't. So this roof is styled and in fact it's a cold roof and it's got components. We'll look at those shortly. Just to make you aware that it has rafters 225, a sarking board, nominally plywood, and then some battens, and then some slates, um, the kind of thick Welsh slates. And that's your datum, so the datum for the roof is the underside of the rafters. It inserts into it's an exterior roof, it inserts into the class roof main. Textures are by component, so they are separately identifiable visually. And data, oops, I haven't actually defined the data yet, but clearly it's um, one of those. There are unfortunately some unsatisfactory things about this plugin. Firstly, of course, is that this eaves will run in front of that gable. Easiest way of showing you what I mean here. See, you get that effect. The roof, the roof in front of the dormers does not obscure it. Uh, and so here, of course, is a roof face, which is the primitive of your roof plugin. If I was to ungroup this roof, it would give me a bunch of roof faces, which in top plan is simply a kind of extrude type affair. Uh, there's a polyline, I want to cut a hole in it. I can. So let's, let's cut a kind of circular hole with it that then actually reaches the ease like that. And we'll see what happens. Now, there, of course it's got the fascia on, but I'll just split them and split them um, and, and, and delete the apron. So now I've got a kind of theoretical dormer that does what I was wanting it to do. Because this has become, uh, this has decayed or been ungrouped to its primitive elements of roof faces. You don't have to use the roof plugin, we could just make a roof face and with a right click or through the model menu there we are roof face and that's perfectly fine so let's make it 2400 is its height let's make it 40 
uh, and 30 and we'll have a that's its angle is cut we can have double on the whole cut we can have splayed which is similar roof preferences um, there we go it's the same kind of dialogue okay so there we are oh then I then I do this I kind of select the edge to define it and there we are I've now got a roof okay there it is and then you know it's a matter of um, it's just a matter of mirroring it okay so that would give me two roof faces and if I've got two roof faces can I compose them into a roof no once you've ungrouped your roof you get roof faces you can't put it back together again so we, we wanted to show how this dormer can be inserted into a roof. You need to have a symbol, and basically it's a window symbol, and you just you can just kind of drop it in. So here's one I prepared earlier. First of all, we'll just look at the settings here in OpenGL. It's a slightly odd thing that if you zoom extents of the roof, it it doesn't it doesn't zoom into the object. I've got some notional shutters actually, even uh, which which actually don't work. Let's look at what is this? This is a control handle for an, a roof element. Yes, it's a dormer. Um, and it has some um, parameters. Centre vertically, building line offset will zero, because I want it to align with the wall below. The slope matches the roof slope, 40. Um, and the height, I've adjusted. Yes, it's got a gable. I mean, there are other options and all the rest of it. It's tricky. There is a win there's a there's a window symbol in there, but I can't now pick it. So that's a bit of a drawback. Let's just look at how we did that. You can see these are the roof lights we've used elsewhere. But this is our window. The, the symbol isn't inserting into the roof. We need to make it active. And then that does it. You need to select it from the resource manager not place it in the drawing, place it directly into the roof. So we're going to do the same kind of um, parameters again. Building line offset, we want that zero. Offset from corner, it refers to the, the far right hand side corner. We'll put that in 2400. Left slope, yes, yes, yes. Width, 2200, yes. Height, this should be the same. Yes, I think that's right. Now we've got a roof with two dormers. Uh, how lovely. Um, let's look from the back. It's a little bit out here. Uh, let's just go to the midpoint, uh, insertion point, to uh, midpoint. There we are. It's 160.5. You can see that in the data bar. Distance from corner plus 160.5. Ping. That'll do that. So that's nice and centered. You can see my shutters won't open. Oops. So it's not reducing the height of the dormer, it's reducing the height of the window. Edit 3D. And of course this has a 3D wall hole component which we've looked at um, before in the Windows lesson. It won't actually insert the window any lower than a kind of hidden default. The 3D wall hole component, I need to reduce that as well to 125. Okay, no, that's the ticket. There's the 3D wall hole component. So, to, to make this work, <laughs> um, I need to just uh, reduce the size of that window. Um, so, the height will make it, I think it will probably be okay if it's 1100. Okay, and then, and then the elevation is 1100 as well. Does that work? Yes! Uh, and again, 3D wall hole component not quite doing what it, what it should. That extrude. I've gone into the rectangle, um, and that's about that, that just minus 100, and there we go. Now I've got a dormer, and the shutters actually work. We'll just put a locus in there so we can spin that around. The sill is sticking out rather an awful lot. It's it's the same sill from the main um, cavity wall so that needs a bit of adjustment so uh, that that is what you can do there it is from the inside you can see the wall thickness is is just not is not enough 
Interestingly, it gives us this option to use the style of the roof, the door, and well, I don't want that because the rafters are, are, are too big. Um, so we've reduced the rafters, we can look at that. Here are the elements, so my rafters are 225 for the big span. Um, so I only wanted them 150 for the door, so I don't want that. Um, so that's about right. Now it's okay, so, so, so for the wall thickness, Let's make it 200 for the dormers. There we go. And we should now then have a decent thickness of wall. And what's happened is that my shutters have got stuck. We want the shutters to roughly align with the front of the wall. Well, let's, let's move that 80. Yeah. Okay. We got there. So that's not bad. You can see that the dormer, the dormer now has a wall thickness. Problem is, I can't give it a colour. The dormer won't give me a finishes class, unfortunately. So I can't match it to the colour of the wall below, which I think is a shame. There's been a lot of discussion um, uh, about the limitations of this. I don't particularly want the eaves to continue in front of it. So what, what, what we're going to do is ungroup it. We can't be limited by the plug-in. And one of the drawbacks with this is uh, with all plug-ins, if it becomes too difficult, if it becomes too difficult to get what you want, then people tend to give up, and that's what's happened. We'll just look at the parameters of the roof style. The kind of exploded components will retain the roof style, the various roof faces. So we'll just look at the roof components here and this edge condition. So whatever the boundary is, uh, I've got my slates projecting uh, 45 mil beyond the boundary. This isn't the roof ease overhang, this is actually the gable overhang. Um, so the battens are then minus 50 uh, and then the roof edge is minus 50 for the sarking so that it doesn't project outside of the gable wall so that the rafters themselves are plus minus zero to, uh, to, the, to the edge boundary. It works rather like a slab style. In this case, I'd rather draw my own gable wall just to locate the roof style. It's in a folder called roof style, so that's my cold roof. Um, and this is my warm roof. We'll have a look at this. It's a bit more involved. Yes, slates, yes, battens, yes, sarking. Now, the rafters are a bit reduced because you add that to the insulation because that's insulation in between the rafters. And you can see here the edge offset is minus 300. So it's pulled right in from the gable end so it doesn't stick out beyond the gable wall. Then, uh, yes, battens, because those are what the interior insulation is pinned to. And then, and then plaster. So there's two layers of insulation. So in this case, the warm roof was over the living room. So you can see what's going on here. We have this roof structure zone. We have battens, we have tiles. We have this roof structure zone with insulation in between it. Uh, then we have uh, another set of battens to pin the inner insulation layer, the reason we put rafters in none because we're going to actually draw those rafters. If, if I have them in uh, roof, uh, the roof structure, the timber class, it'll give me a solid. If it's got a fill, it'll give me a solid and I don't want that in the model. So we'll, use, we'll show how the framer then works so that um, we can actually see the roof framing and that's done by turning off the class of the roof, which is roof main, 